Well, I wanted to go over a few things with you today. Uh, first of all, we see here in my console, and I am in my learner lab, but we notice here there's a cost and usage. So the current month cost that I've used so far is $4.30, forecasted by the end of the month is $10.52, and there are things that you can do that will increase the cost or lower the cost, but uh, I'm going to come here to EC2. Uh, granted, this is in AWS Academy's Learner Lab, so I'm not paying for it. Um, they give $100 for um, for college students and, and stuff to play with um, to learn AWS. Um, but I'm going to come and I'm going to get rid of some of my instances just so that uh, uh, I'm going to get rid of these two. Just so I can save some money, uh, so terminate instance, terminate. Um, and once again, I mean these, they don't cost a lot when they're running, um, but they also have disks. So let's just look at EC2 instance cost. Um, this is the one I think I usually use. And I'm going to launch an instance why I, um, so that it'll get going while I'm doing this. Another day. AWS Linux. I think I maybe just want to change the key pair to be my personal key. And then. Let's see, do I have a, I don't think I have a, so we'll use creating a security group. I don't like doing that, but um, since this is a lab account, I haven't set up security groups. Okay, cool. So while we're doing this, let's just look at um, these. So this is a T2 uh, Nano. And so it has, is that right, T2 or? I remember why I launched. So instances, let's just look really quick. T2 Micro. So the T2 Micro, it has a gig of memory and it's elastic back block storage, uh, low to moderate network performance and Linux on-demand cost is just over a penny an hour. Okay, uh, so once again, this does not account for extra disk and stuff. Um, if you reserve it, it's less than a penny an hour. So reserve is if you pay to to, uh, to lock it in that you're going to use it uh, for a year or whatever. And you can pay for it um, up front or there's different ways of paying for it. Uh, Linux spot instance, ones that can get yanked from you, um, is uh, substantially less. So that way you can use it. But if someone else is willing to pay more for it, uh, you get a, no, uh, a notice and you have to sh shut things down nicely and they take it back. Um, and Windows On Demand is a bit more. Uh, Windows Reserved is about the same as Linux On Demand. Anyway, so uh, here's the cost for each instance. Um, so this covers just that instance. It does not cover um, extra storage that's added. It does not cover uh, the storage when it's not in use. It does not cover um, uh, oh it, it, elastic blocks. Um, it does not cover uh, the network traffic in and out. So you don't have to pay for the inbound. You have to pay for the outbound traffic. Okay. So cool. Uh, so we have this another day. I'm going to while I'm thinking about it. I have uh, elastic IPs. So let's just come here. I have two of them. One's uh, allocated to my ethical hacking. This one is not allocated anymore. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to associate it with the instance another day. Associate. Uh, so that means this is going to be its IP address, um, which is going to cause me a problem. And in fact, I'll just show you that. So if I SSH ec2-user at in this IP address, it's not going to work because um, I already have that 
uh, host and it, I know about that host. It has a different um, identification. And so this is like someone came up to you and said that they're your friend's name and that they're your friend, but you know they're not your friend. Uh, this is a new system. I've already seen it, uh, seen this IP before, but this system does not make sense. So I'm just going to um, rm this file, which is getting rid of it. And if I SSH to again, it's going to say, hey, I haven't seen it before because I just deleted that entire file. And I'm going to accept it. <clears throat> and so that file is now going to be created uh, with the information of that host. Cool. So now we're getting to what I wanted to do with you today. Um, uh, we've all, in my prior videos, done it used yum. Okay. So sudo yum dash y update. Uh, and I don't know if there'll be any updates because it's a brand new system. And it, I think they usually run updates as they're, as they're booting up. Although it's amazing how frequently uh, Linux packages might get updated. So it, there, there could be one that comes out just right after you up, uh, update. Um, but sometimes, for some reason, in fact, let's do this. Um, Java dash dash version. And Java is not found. So I'm going to... Um, do sudo yum dash y install Java. Um, so Java is used for a lot of things. Um, it, yeah, it used to be, seems like the, the king of, of uh, coding in huge corporations, but I don't think it is as much anymore, but still it's heavily used. Um, so Java dash dash version. Um, and we see here that it is uh, 17 open JDK uh, 17.006. And the problem that uh, uh, I've seen is for some reason, uh, Java developers don't like uh, it, That's not new enough for them. So let's come out here. Um, Oracle Java. This is not the right one. Download Java JDK. So there are two. Uh, there are two different Javas. Yeah, that's looks like where we were. And it, oh, it is different. <clears throat> so there's two different Javas: the JRE Java Runtime uh, and the JDK, the Java, Java Development Kit. Um, you need the JDK if you're going to be compiling. Um, you need the, the runtime if you're running things. Okay, uh, the JDK will have a runtime. <clears throat> so if you look here, Java 17, which we have, uh, is receiving updates until 2024, where JDK 19 is only in uh, until 2023. So that's weird that JDK 19 is supported for less than JDK 17. And then JDK 19 is going to be superseded by Java JDK 20. Uh, I'm not an expert on Java. I don't understand why. My best guess is JDK 9, uh, 17 is kind of the stable uh, long-term support build. And JDK 19 is a stable but not long-term support and is going to be uh, replaced. That's my best guess. Um, anyway, so we come down here. We're going to need it for Linux because we're on Linux. And then we have to understand what package we're going to need. So uh, we are Linux, but we're not ARM. ARM is the processes that, that are like in phones, some Chromebooks, I believe. Um, x86-64 is the processor that is... Uh, Intel and AMD. That's what I. Uh, that's what uh, I'm running on this. Now you can run an ARM instance in AWS. I didn't choose an ARM instance. Um, at least I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, I haven't really played with that much. Uh, I usually use the x86-64. Um, and so there's this compressed archive, which you could then compile yourself. There's the Debian package, which will work with quite a few Linux versions and the RPM package that will work with most of the others, okay? So uh, RPM is Red Hat Package Manager, um, and Debian 
is uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Kali, that, that route. So Red Hat is Red Hat, Fedora, Scent, and Amazon, um, and Oracle, so uh, Linux. So th these are just different families that uh, if you look at the history. So this is the one that we're going to want. I'm going to copy that link address. I'm going to come back here, which, by the way, I'm going to scroll up. If you noticed here, when I did the Java install, it found these different things I need to install, and then it downloaded the RPMs, Red Hat Package Manager, okay? And then it installed them. The problem is um, I might not be able to get this specific version of Java from my repo. A repo is a place that stores these, these packages, okay? So I'm gonna do a wget and paste the URL. And it's gonna come down. <clears throat> While it's coming down, I'm gonna come back here. And this SHA-256, that's gonna give me this nice little code to make sure <clears throat> that the package has not been altered, okay? So I'm just gonna echo this code. And then <clears throat> I'm going to do the SHA-256 sum of this. And <clears throat> it just does math. And you can see that this is what it should be. And it is what it is. Sweet. So that means it has not been changed. Okay. Now let's install it. So we downloaded it just like we saw up here with Yum. But then it got they were installed. So now let's install it. So RPM dash IDH Jerry uh, JDK. Okay. And oh, it's person dynamics and the sudo. And in case you don't know, the double uh, exclamation point says sudo my last command, which that was that. So it goes, it goes ahead and installs it. So the problem I have now is if this package gets updated, it, since I didn't get it from my repo, it's not going to be able to get it from my repo. So every time this gets an update, I have to pull it down manually, um, which is one of the reasons I do not like um, getting packages not from my repo. It's just a lot more time. Um, it's harder to maintain. It's... Yeah, I would just rather get uh, get them from uh, a known good repo. <clears throat> and if they're not there, then maybe we really should be thinking about if we should be installing it. Um, there are some other times when I have installed things that uh, are not from the repo, but usually not as critical as something like Java. Um, Java has been the one that's the most critical. Uh, by the way, oh, you should have done this already. Java dash dash version. Uh, we can see that, yeah, we're right now, now at the build 19. Um, I want to show you there's a way to manage this as well. Alternatives, dash dash list. And we'll see that there is a Jerry 17 now. Um, and Java points to JDK 19. Uh, I'm not going to go through alternatives. You can actually set up, this is kind of like an environment for the system. And you can set the default Java if you have multiple versions. That's what it's done. Um, and anyway, cool. I hope you like that. History. Uh, so I'll put my commands below the video. And we'll see you in the next one.